So this is two campsites right on top of each other. Hmm. Well, that's going to be interesting. Hey, friends. So this weekend, I just wanted to come out and do a little recon mission here at uh, this Reynolds Creek campground. It's called Reynolds Creek Park, actually. It's on Waco Lake. And, um, yeah, I was interested in it because on the map it looked really cool. It looked cool. like they had, like, two or three campsites in each little loop. So, as you can see, like, I'm right here. And then this is another campsite right next to me. But these are the only two down this road. And so there's just all these little finger roads going all over the place out here. So that's kind of cool. It's definitely different. But, yeah, too bad the trees are so thick. I can't see the lake. I bet it's beautiful. But, yep, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to go out and do a little exploring, see what else is out there, maybe check out the other campgrounds that are on this lake. And, yep, there's a couple of things I've always wanted to check out in Waco, and I never have. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Yep, for now I'm just cooking some dinner here, waiting for that sun to go down. Maybe I'll get the computer out and do some editing, but, yep, it's just too hot right now. Pretty much just sitting in the sprinkler. <laughs> That's why my hair is wet. Yep, not bad though. I mean, you get wet, you cool off, you forget it's hot. Then, then you remember it's hot and you turn the sprinkler back on. So, that's my afternoon so far. Stan warned me about this. He told me that this little uh, extension cord was not thick enough or good enough to run what I'm trying to run with this air conditioner and everything. And he recommended that I get a new one. Well. A few minutes ago, everything stopped in the van. That thing was blazing hot. So, yeah, I think Dan was right. So, I've got my AC plugged in, <laughs> coming out the window and directly into the power. So, I still have air conditioning. Yeah, there's no way I can sleep in there without air conditioning tonight. It's not even going to be, you know, below 90 until midnight or something. So, yeah, this will have to do. But then tomorrow, I think I'm going to head to Harbor Freight, see if I can't get a little bit better extension cord so this won't happen again. It's always something, I tell you. Yeah, that's awesome. Good job. So, a little more on that melted um, extension cord. I didn't exactly really melt it. It was just, it was so hot to the touch. And like I said, it clicked off. It turned everything off. So I have a feeling something did indeed burn <laughs> in half in there somewhere. So yeah, I'm taking that to the dumpster and I'm going to get something a little more heavy duty. What I was trying to do was I had lights on, I had the air conditioner on, I had a separate fan running, and I had my refrigerator going. And it was, you know, 100 degrees with that um, extension cord laying in the sun. Just did not work out well for me. So I'm going to go get a more heavy duty extension cord for sure. And I've got the fridge plugged into solar, so it should all be okay there. And, uh, yeah. Alright, this is what I had. <laughs> and it looks like the toughest one they have is going to be this one. Wow, that's quite the difference in price, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really need one that long. I don't know. Hmm. All right, hopefully that will fix my problem. All right, onward and upward we go. Okay, so this is the Waco Mammoth National Monument. You've arrived. Thank you. Hopefully I will learn a little bit more about it. So I did look it up online, and it's there's no entry fee. The only thing, if you want to guided tour, I think it's five dollars. So I'm probably not going to do the guided tour. I'm just going to check it out and see what's here. See, so, yep, I popped inside and they said that you do have to pay the five dollars to go on the guided tour if you want to see the mammoths. I get that. They don't want people just running down there tearing stuff up. So I went to the van and got five bucks and I think I'm going to go on a little tour. I was just going to skip it and I thought, you know, I'm never going to be here again. So I might as well check it out now. So of course we turn them with our trees. Now how do you usually figure out how old a tree is? Um, how many you cut it down and count the rings. Huh? Yep, you cut it down and you count the rings. 
we did not want to cut it down that did kind of defeat the purpose so what we did instead was drill inside and take a core sample it's about the size of my pen a little bit longer by using that we were able to determine that our tree is slightly over 250 years old as a point of reference that is older than the declaration of independence so a very old very valued member of our park now if you'll follow me down this path we'll make our next stop and talk about the ice age in texas y'all will just follow me So our mammoths were found down in this creek bed. They were found by those two gentlemen, Paul Barron and Eddie Bufkin, back in 1978 when they were 19 years old. Paul and Eddie were supposed to be out here working that day. That is because this entire area used to be a dairy farm. So it replaced everything you see with some cows and some grass, and that's what this area was. Now Paul and Eddie were supposed to be working that day. Being the teenagers they were, they got a little bit distracted, and instead of working, they went out exploring. They found our creek bed, started walking down it, looking for anything that might catch their eye, so things like spear points and arrowheads, stuff like that. They didn't find anything like that, but what they found instead was even more spectacular. They ended up uncovering a three foot long femur bone. And while it's not too uncommon to find bones on a dairy farm, and I know that we say everything's bigger in Texas, even we don't have cows with three foot long femur bones. You see that raised platform connected to that back dirt wall? It's got a couple of white sides on it. It does include an unidentified animal, as well as a saber tooth cat tooth. And again, once we're closer to that event, we'll talk more about it and y'all can see it a bit better. And with that event, we are not sure of a date for it. is our camel down there. So she is on that very bottom layer in the middle of the floor. Like a lot of the other animals in here, she also has a nickname. Her nickname is Flo. Flo is a camelops pestinus, which is one of 14 species of camel native to North America during the ice age. They did have a pretty huge range in size. The smallest one is now known as the Chihuahua camel. Well, it was 45 minutes well spent, and who knew they'd have air conditioning. Score. All right, onward to my next little destination of the day. Door because my water is up the other door. Oops. <laughs> 